So we're here back uh, at uh, Hallwall's virtual space, which is my home, uh, continuing our socially distant studio visits with artists near and uh, far and wide. Uh, today we're talking to Julian Montague, artist and graphic designer in Buffalo, New York. Uh, Julian and I are probably about a mile apart from each other right now, but it feels like much, much further. Uh, <laughs> And my first question, Julian, is uh, how are you? How are you doing? Uh, how are you feeling? Um, you know, I feel uh, okay. In, in some ways, I, um, I work from home normally. So like my uh, parts of my life haven't changed. But um, we are expecting a baby in early May. So that is a layer of stress on top of already being concerned about the medical system and everything. So that's kind of the big thing that looms over every <laughs> waking minute, I guess. I was going to ask you about the weirdness of, um, you know, people have noted on social media that artists uh, and people like artists and designers who are self-employed uh, are already in a state of semi-quarantine most of the time because they work from home. Uh, so is, are, do you feel more distant from what's happening or are you, is the weirdness of it impacting you in other ways? Um, yeah, no, I definitely feel like, my daily, my every day isn't, it's not like I, it must be so different going to a workplace every day and then all of a sudden you're home, you know, and, and I'm already set up to work from home. It's where I am all day, every day. So it doesn't feel as weird. But I now have Emma, my wife is upstairs doing her mental health counseling over video connection. So I have her, so now we're both working from home, which it's worked out well, we have the space for it, but it's, um, yeah, I guess I feel a little distance from the disruption. So it's a little bit more weird where you kind of like, it, you get reminded all you sort of look look out the window and realize whatever the world is not the same anymore <laughs> um maybe differently than i would if i i had my whole life turned upside down now we're both part of an art community which is, a big part of an art community means um socializing going to openings going to events seeing people conversing with people and you've always struck me as someone who uh relishes that kind of contact. Uh, you go to a lot of openings, go to a lot of events. Uh, you always seem really engaged when you're talking to people. Um, how much are you missing that element right now? Yeah, I definitely am. I mean, I also like a regular at um, Cafe Intersection, which used to be Cafe Taza. So like that used to be my one, you know, connecting with people in that kind of space as well. And I definitely, like, I wake up in the morning and my impulse is to go to that kind of space. And then I realize, wait, no, this isn't how it works anymore. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's been, yeah, I've been missing that, that kind of, like, social engagement. I mean, obviously, in a world without Facebook and so forth, it would be profoundly more isolating. So I still feel like I hear those voices of people I know by just interacting in that space, which, of course, it isn't the same. I'm, I'm now feeling a real even just being in an art space in general, like I'd love to go to, you know, a museum or something, you know what I mean? I just would love to be in that kind of space. Um, and that is starting to get frustrating. But yeah, definitely that sense of community being cut off is, um, I think it's, we're still at the beginning, you know what I mean? So I, I don't know, you know, in two months, I think it's gonna be a much more profound feeling. Yeah, I mean, I'm already jonesing. I mean, you know, I work at a place that has a gallery and uh, I'm someone as a curator that um, enjoys being in a physical space with artwork, um, being in its presence. So yeah, I'm, I kind of share that um, desire you just expressed to sort of be, be in those places because we, you know, as, as artists and uh, culture workers, we live our lives in those spaces uh, to a large degree and now we're kind of shut off from them. Um, so I wanted to get to this poster and I'm going to try and uh, do my best here to uh, share it, uh, which I think I can do. I'm not totally Zoom uh, fluent, but um, let's see. Did I share it? You did, yeah. So back on March 16th on Instagram, you wrote, I don't know what things are like in your cities, but in mine, there are far too many people acting like nothing is wrong. The bars were still packed over the weekend. 
if we don't all try to practice social distancing, this situation is going to be very bad. I was inspired by my Instagram associate, uh, P-E-I-M-S-L-O-O-T, Peem Sloot, to design some kind of graphic for the cause. He has been making posters to get the message out. And then you posted that to your website and encouraged people to repost it and share. And um, maybe you could talk about the impulse behind making that poster. Yeah, so the guy Peem Sloot, he's a Dutch artist uh, who uh, has been, he's just been making all these crazy, I mean, just sort of a lot of very straightforward posters. Um, he's in this world of people that, you know, I know but don't know from Instagram, you know, the kind of like artists and designers that I associate with there. And, you know, it is this, uh, when this is what I, you know, being an artist and designer, like, you know, the, it's the only thing I have to contribute really to things like this. And there's been a real impulse to make something about uh, what's happening, but the, 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 um, but then you also, part of yours is like, well, what is, I mean, like, what is the point, right? Unless you're, so this, in this case, this, this flatten the curve was such a clear graphic way to depict what this situation was, you know, I'd been seeing that all over the web. And so I felt it was just something where I could kind of like clarify it with a message and, and, you know, make that something that, that, um, I could maybe reach people. Um, so it's just, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not, I wasn't even trying to be too artful about it. You know what I mean? It's just supposed right. to be straightforward, like stay home and like, you know, using sort of clean graphics and that, and that whole thing. I mean, the impulse, you know, is, is clear. Like, I mean, over that sort of St. What would have been St. Patrick's Day weekend, um, Emma and I were driving around, not getting out of the car, just sort of drive, like going out for driving the country. Um, and just, yeah, coming up like through South Buffalo and stuff and all these bars you could see were like full of people. And here in Allentown where we live, like, you could see people just weren't taking it seriously yet. And, um, and yeah, so that obviously has proved to be, I mean, now they, I think mo, it seems like people really are in our area. Um, but so now, much has changed. I, I don't want to get into the sort of, uh, suggest that you're like anyone else uh, concerned with how many likes you get on Instagram and that, but you actually have about, uh, 64,000 followers on Instagram. I noticed this post got about 4,200 likes, which, you know, doesn't feel like a lot out of that many followers. Do you have a sense of, uh, through any other algorithm, uh, how often it's been downloaded from your website or how much it's been shared? Well, let me tell you, let me just I'll look at the stats on it here. So, uh, it was shared, uh, I can view the insights on the post on Instagram. So uh, 1,300 people sent it to somebody else. Um, 53, almost 54,000 people saw it. Like mm -hmm. that was the general reach on the post. So I don't know. Um, so yeah, so that's like 4,000 likes is a lot of likes for anything that I post. Do you know what I mean? Like, so that's actually really on the high end. So that was a pretty strong response and reaching 53,000 people. And then I don't know how many people saw it via like those potentially 1300 shares. Do you know what I mean? Like that's a lot of, that could potentially a lot of people seeing it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, all things considered, that's a, by my standards and abilities a pretty good reach. Um, yeah. You know, I don't think there hasn't been a ton of activity on the website. I just think that people now are so, disinclined to go to websites basically or it's a much smaller group of people so i think but i think those shares and reshares i think might have is a pretty good you know who knows how many people saw it but i think the other thing that i, I think is very interesting about the poster is um you know you were saying that you know it's not like it's something we haven't seen we've seen the diagram more detailed other iterations of the diagram but th your poster kind of exemplifies the sort of basic efficacy of design, which is to um, corral and represent uh, a certain set of information in a concise, direct, and uh, immediate kind of way. Uh, in this situation, maybe to the point of urgency. You know, I mean, you kind of made the point by really amplifying the, the phrases, go home and stay there, and flatten the curve, which we've sure. all heard, but when they're really emphatically 
laid out on a poster like that, it, uh, it has a, the appropriate sense of being alarming. Well, yeah, I'm using the, the command form, you know what I mean? Also, like I'm not suggesting it, I'm like, go home, <laughs> you know? Um, so it sort of has that, you know, I mean, obviously this is what, design is also part of what propaganda is, you know, like get messaging in this sort of forceful way. Um, so it's a, yeah, I, I think it, you're just trying to, to clean everything up from like the, the graphics I was seeing and, and attaching it to just like a, an order, essentially. Uh, is what I was going for. I mean, I've been trying to think about other ways because I just saw someone just forwarded me that the um, the WHO, I mean, WHO World Health Organization, not the band, is looking for, um, asking for like various creatives to submit, you know, whatever, posters, songs, anything they can to get the message out. So I just saw that this morning. So it's, you know, I'm trying to think like what, you know, I've been kind of spending some time trying to think about like, well, how could I make another poster that sort of expresses something useful that isn't too artistic or do you know what I mean? Like actually is a tool of communication as opposed to sort of a self-indulgent thing of like, look, I'm being clever. You know what I mean? Or I'm sort of cleverly interpreting the situation and making it into some design in my, you know, my own creative thing. Well, you um, kind of have to be a little bit clever for it to work, right? <laughs> sure, right. So, I mean, and, and that's a great history of like, all this kind of, you know, um, of people making posters for causes and everything else. And I, I, um, I just want to make sure if I do something again, that it's, it's, re it's actually relevant in that it could reach somebody who's where it's not a purely preaching to the choir situation, right? Like something that has the power to be like, Oh, okay. Maybe someone who saw this, who didn't, you know, in other words, not using an insular language of art or design that kind of only speaks to an audience. that's probably already on board with this. Well, that's the design sweet spot, right? Like yeah, trying, right. I mean, trying trying to get outside of the just the aesthetic or the the purity of the concept, or you know, and, and widening that that reach and that perspective. Yeah, and I mean, I'm always as a in my artwork, I've often tried to be that way in the sense that I I, I don't want I've I've done very complicated weird things, but I always try to construct it with a way that there's a point where people can get into it or you know what I mean where a person who even isn't an art person can understand like the thing that I'm addressing or what I'm trying to you know uh just a, a doorway in for anybody it's kind of always in my mind when I'm making things like I want that to be there well speaking of which I was gonna this is where I was eventually getting to and you might not have an answer for this but um I was thinking about you know a lot of your work and the work behind me is not indicative of this because it's not really, it's designed, but it's not taxonomical. Uh, no, whereas no. Um, yeah. the, the idea of uh, those are your paintings from a 2019 show at Anna Kaplan Contemporary ID installation shop that I borrowed off the web. Um, and I was thinking though of your, I guess, better known or most well known work, the your taxonomy of stray shopping carts, um, where you classified and developed genus and species for different kinds of shopping carts in different scenarios. And taxonomy has always been sort of in the texture of your work uh, through different series. And I wonder if, I was wondering if this situation has got you thinking about taxonomies of social distancing or hmm. uh, taxonomies of the pandemic or you know it's funny I think uh, not really <laughs> I, don't, I mean I guess I haven't gone I haven't thought about it in that way yet I've sort of been in the past few years like my a lot of my artistic drive has gone through my um, my fictional design work like my fake art institution that I'm making posters for and these fake books so in some ways I've been thinking about it through that lens of like um, that fictional world I've built where all these, are, because it's, it takes place in the sort of 1970s and I'm very into that kind of design from that era. And I spend a lot of time looking at that. A lot of what I post on Instagram is also kind of designed from that mid century into the seventies era. And I, um, so I've kind of been thinking about it more like that, like those kinds of the way people made, um, like health, like, like public health posters and things like that in Switzerland in the 1950s. I mean, that's kind of where more where my head has been as far as like what 
thinking about um, how this fits into kind of the, the things I'm interested in. I haven't really thought about that. Yeah, that, that the sort of, I suppose there is a lot of, um, yeah, there's something there as far as like kind of when you think about how you could graphically kind of present these different modes of distancing and these kind of ways that we're all in boxes having to relate to each other. Well, I but mean, I our, our whole existence has suddenly shifted into certain classifications of behavior and yeah, physical proximity and uh, uh, gestures and uh, things like that. I just uh, you know, I just thought I'd poke you with the taxonomy question. No, it's an interesting thing. I, yeah, it's funny because I've been on this weird journey over the past few years of like, you know, these super complicated conceptual projects where then I, I started like ironically making these paintings for my fictional artists. And then I started making, well, I mean, with some exceptions, I've done the landscape paintings before, but, but um, I started making these like, you know, abstract geometric paintings. So I've sort of like backed myself conceptually like out of my <laughs> I don't know out of one conceptual framework into where I was sort of doing something like insincerely to now being like you know doing this thing I always never thought I would do which is make these sort of abstract paintings I don't know, it's a very funny uh, 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 it's whatever it's, I, I'm in a funny place I guess is what I'm saying with my um where my head is with my sort of like how I think about my own work you know mm -hmm. conceptually um anyway <laughs> well listen julian thank you so much for taking some time today to talk uh it's been great to see you in the virtual and uh hope you stay well hope you keep your distance uh hope everything goes well with the baby yeah thank and you. i hope we see you in person very soon i hope so too i'm looking forward to going to some openings like whenever that happens <laughs> all right maybe thanks, all right thanks a lot